The first step is to download your pattern. Select your file according to your paper format and the size you wish to make. Print your pattern at 100% scale. There is a scale test included on the first page of the pattern to ensure you have printed correctly. Trim around the thin black border and use clear sticky tape to piece the pages together. There is a layout included in the instruction guide to help you lay out all the pages correctly. For this style, I have adhered a medium weight fusible interfacing to the main fabric. This will give structure to the garment and help hold its shape. If your fabric is particularly heavyweight, you may not need this, but in most cases it is advisable to use it. Trim around each individual pattern piece and lay the pattern onto the fabric. You can follow the cutting layout included in the instructions to make the most economical use of your fabric. Cut according to the individual instructions marked on each of the pieces. Unfold the centre front bodice piece. Pin the side front bodice pieces to the centre front bodice piece. Match the notches along the seam. Stitch together using a 1cm or 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Repeat for both sides and then press well with the iron. Pin the side back bodice pieces to the side front bodice piece, matching the notches along the seam. Stitch together using a 1cm or 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Repeat for both sides and then press well with the iron. Pin the centre back bodice pieces to the side back bodice piece, matching the notches along the seam. Stitch together using a 1cm or 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Repeat for both sides and press well with the iron. Place the bodice aside for now. Unfold the centre front hip piece and then pin the side front hip pieces to the centre front hip piece. Match the notches along the seam. Stitch together using a 1cm or 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Repeat for both sides and then press well with the iron. Pin the side back hip pieces to the side front hip pieces, matching the notches along the seam. Stitch together using a 1cm or 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Repeat for both sides and press well with the iron. Pin the centre back hip pieces to the side back hip pieces, matching the notches along the seam. Stitch together using a 1cm or 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Repeat for both sides and press well with the iron. Place the bodice pieces together with the hip pieces at the waist seam. Pin together matching the seams up along the way with the right sides touching one another. Stitch together using a 1cm or 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and press well with the iron. Once all of these steps are complete, you'll then repeat them all for the lining pieces exactly the same as we have just done. Just don't stitch the bodice and the hips together at the waist. Leave them separate so that we can attach the boning. Attach a 6mm or quarter inch piece of rigoline or sew-in boning to each of the lining seam allowances. Cut a separate piece for the bodice seam and a separate piece for the hip seam so that there is a break in the boning at the waist. This will make it easier to sit down when wearing the garment. Ensure the boning pieces sit 1cm or 3 8 of an inch above and below the top and bottom edge so that it does not interfere with the seam when stitched to the main. 
Use the sewing machine to secure the boning neatly to each of the lining seam allowances. Repeat this, adding boning to each of the seams. Place the lining pieces together at the waist seam with the right sides touching one another. Pin along the waist seam. Stitch together at the waist seam using a 1cm or 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Place the lining pieces on top of the main piece with the right sides touching one another. Pin in place along the top and bottom edge. Stitch along the top and bottom edge using a 6mm or quarter of an inch seam allowance. Clip into the curves of the neckline seam allowance with a pair of scissors. Take care not to clip into the stitching. This will help the garment sit flat when turned through to the right side. Pull the garment through to the right side and press well along the top and bottom edge with the iron. Overlock each of the centre back edges separately. Open out the invisible zipper and match it up along each of the centre back seams. Pin each side of the zipper in place. Alternatively, you can also use an open ended invisible zipper for the centre back edge if you are fuller in the hips and don't want to have to step into the garment. You'll just have to make sure your zipper is long enough to span all the way from the top edge to the bottom edge along the centre back. Change the machine foot to the invisible zipper foot and stitch down each side of the zipper tape as closely to the zipper teeth as possible. Close the zipper once both sides have been secured in place. Pin the remainder of the centre back seam below the base of the zipper closed. Pin from the zipper base all the way through to the hem. Stitch matching up the zipper stitching at the base of the zipper using a 1cm or 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way down through to the hem. Fold the top edge of the zipper tape behind the seam allowance. Pin the zipper tape in place and then use a hand sewing needle to neatly secure each side of the top edge of the zipper in place. Once you've finished that, you're all done.